today we're gonna talk about this brand new life from Cinepier and everything you need to know and I mean everything but before we talk about the pros and cons of this light we're gonna use the heck out of this light in different shooting environment and first up it's gonna be light painting that car behind me and to help me with that we got Dennis over here so Dennis and I met on Instagram and we had coffee together several days ago so I totally trust him in uh, this middle of nowhere <laughs> so we're gonna do this you ready Dennis Show me. Ready? Hey, how's it going? Really good to see you here today. So I will show you the result of that light painting at the end of the video. In fact, Dennis and I did one more round of that light painting by him running with me. It turned out pretty cool, so make sure you stick around. But as a disclaimer, this video is not sponsored. I'm not getting paid for this, so I'm able to talk about the pros. But as usual, I'm going to talk about the cons, as in limitation. You should be aware of these lights. So the first pro I want to tell you guys about is the build quality of this light. Now, this is a Cinepure line. So Drew and May sent a pure line to make a budget line of products, but this does not feel like budget. I mean, this whole entire thing, metal casing everywhere, solid build quality. Yeah, this is nowhere near budget. Even the control knob, the top part is plastic, but I believe the side is metal, but it feels really high quality. And what's interesting is that the first layer of diffusion, it does come off officially. How do I know? There are these two white dots that's lined up. So if you go to the red dot, it pops out like this in case you want to go brighter. <laughs> I don't know if you want to go brighter than this, but if you want to take this off, it does come off officially. Let me pop that back in. I'm totally roughing this light, but this, in case you're wondering, is 14 inches, which is very familiar to me because this laptop here is my new MacBook Pro 14 inches. So about right there, that's how you know. So I am very familiar with this length. However, what I'm not familiar with is this girth. So I just have to tell you guys, this is a thick boy look at this but on the upside it does stand up very nicely by itself you don't need a stand i mean if you really want it to be secure you could take one of these gimbal tripods right i have so many of these and you could pop that in there and you can stand it up pretty nicely like that there's another quarter 20 right on the top also but you might be wondering how do i secure that really nicely on a light stand well i'm glad you asked because they also provide depending on the package you're getting probably this is another mounting solution that you improvise the inside of it is rubber so it provides good protection and you clamp that on and it goes in real tight too bam that's not going anywhere. There's a quarter 20 here and quarter 20 there. So this essentially will provide you quick release to your light stand. So during that light painting, there was actually a third light right next to the camera and we flashed it really hard with the app. We just turned it on and turned it off real quick to get that proper exposure on the car. That's how bright this thing is. So you might be thinking, that looks a lot like the Aperture Infinity Bar. That's what I thought too when I first saw it without looking at the actual spec. But remember, Aperture Infinity Bar, the one foot version, which is similar to this, is a nine watt rated light. So this, in a way, is an entirely different class. In fact, I took this light to fishing just, <laughs> just to test it out. <laughs> so I was able to light the whole entire pier with one light. I know all the light brands gonna be like, oh, we send lights to say, and the only thing he does is go fishing. I did use this at a professional setting too, which we'll talk about later. And speaking Speaking of professional setting, let's talk about the fan noise. And you might be wondering also, where is the fan? So this is a really cool design, by the way. So the fan is hidden inside this really nice metal heat sink. There are multiple fans inside of it, and it's fairly quiet unless you go like 100% full load. But I wanna show you guys the cool creative mode this thing brings. So there are different modes. Obviously it does RGB, A, B, C, D, F, G, and flash music mode where it reacts to sound. I'm not gonna go over every single effects. I mean, there are so many of them, but I'm gonna go ahead and go to my favorite one. It's called Two Chase. It turns on two different colors and then moves like if you're like driving through a street, right? So I'm able to customize which two color and what speed this thing moves at. Oh cool, I just noticed this. You can set the background color well. So I put the background color as black. This is cool if you put this next to a helmet and then obviously if you're in a motorcycle, it's gonna go a lot faster. Let's pick the speed as like five. 
Yeah, so practically, I think that's one of the coolest modes. Let me go ahead and turn this off. I'm really excited about this light. There's so many creative things I'm just thinking of just seeing those different effects. So if you get the upper package of this light, it's going to come with different accessories. Let me show you guys real quick. So it comes with this bag, nice little jean material cloth. Also pad it. So technically, we've seen this from Juin before, but this is a larger version of it. So this is a grid that you would simply put it over. That's what that looks like. And the light itself has a pretty good diffusion already, but if you want even more diffusion, it has extra diffusion. It's like a little shower cap. But in order to use that, you do need this. And I have to say, these accessories make this light so much more useful. So this reflector does come off, so you can have bare base like this. But because the reflector is just so compact, I'm just gonna leave it on there. So you snack that back on. Did I say smack? I meant, I meant snap. <laughs> Nobody's smacking anything. But I think the most interesting accessory, I want to show you this, is going to be the way you guys saw this already, to link the light together, right? So let me quickly demonstrate that for you. And I'm hoping this accessory is available during launch of this light. Sometimes, you know, Juin launches the light and the accessories like launch a little bit later, but I'm really hoping this is available. So I took one out already. So this is the mount that's going to link the two lights together. This is the male end. The female one's already on there, but it's pretty easy. There's a rubber pad already also, so it's going to protect the light because it's all metal, you know? So you simply line up at the end of the light screw it on tight because uh, I'll talk about how heavy these lights are <laughs> all right there you go so this lines up clicks and there is a, a lock so it doesn't just pop out so only way to get this out is if you actually press this down and then release it so technically yes you could accidentally hit that but unless you hit that button it's not coming out so in a way you could just keep linking these unlimited amount and make huge giant light. But there's some limitation with this mount, so I'll talk about that a little bit later. But I want to tell you guys about the battery life on this thing because what makes this light really different than any other light is the fact that there's a huge battery on this. This is the kind of light where you set it and you just forget it. So I want to share with you some specs here. So Juin sent me a spec sheet over here. So at 100 watt, 100 percent, it says it's gonna last about 54 minutes and and at 50% power, which is around 50 watt, it lasts 129 minutes. So of course I had to do my own test. So I believe this test was done at either really cold temperature or really warm temperature, but I wanted to do it somewhere in the middle so it turns on all the LED lights. So this is the result I got. At 4200 Kelvin at 75%, it lasted 66 minutes on the first test and 68 minutes on the second test. Pretty impressive still. At 35% power, it lasted 142 minutes on the first test and 146 minutes on the second test. I had to do it multiple times using different lights just in case I damaged one of the batteries because I used the heck out of this. But here's the kicker at 10% power. Okay, remember 10 watt of power, it lasted 376 minutes guys that's six hour and 16 minutes. Just out of context, let me just turn on 10% for you. Okay, that's 2%, right? So 10% power or 10 watt. This is 10 watt, guys. Imagine being at this brightness for over six hours. So a couple weeks ago, I had to help out a friend of mine and I was able to use that as a backlight and a rim light. And I didn't worry about a thing because I knew when I turned that on at between like 10% and 20%, I could just leave it there and not worry about it. But you're right, sometimes in a studio like that, you have to go on a longer shoot at higher intensity, in which case I would actually plug it in. So this thing fortunately supports USB-C also. So if you open up this rubber gasket, you'll see two ports. One is DC charging, another one is USB-C. And speaking of USB-C port, when you use a PD quick charge, mine was 3.0, I'm getting about 36 watts of input into this device. And the port does obviously accept higher wattage, so when you use it and charge at the same time, it does go much higher. And the reason why I'm a huge fan of USB-C charging is because the DC charger, they're kind of big. So it does come with one of these. So if I'm traveling with multiple lights, I'm probably gonna stick to USB-C only. 
So let's talk about cons, AKA the limitation you should be aware of is the fact that this thing is not a light light. So without this adapter at the end, I did weigh it. It weighs about 1400 grams guys, which is about three pounds. So you might be disappointed that there's no magnets on this light. Usually when you get a bar light like this, it comes with the magnet solution, right? So I can understand why they don't want you to put this on a magnet. If this thing falls, yeah, it's gonna hurt some toes. So there's no magnet on this, which also means that if you wanna put this on a light stand you can't just put it in a really light travel light stand so the minimum i would recommend i have a pretty cool light stand that pro photo was it photo pro i always forget photo pro okay photo pro gave me one of these so this unlike me has really really long legs and what's special about this light stand is that the top part comes off which gives you a really, really flat surface. So when you put it on here, you got a lot more surface area contact. Even this light stand, which is pretty hefty light stand for a travel light stand, I wouldn't go above like four or five feet. In fact, I would probably bring it up to about my face and anything higher than that. You might end up using like a C stand. And I'll talk more about this light stand because it's really cool. One of the future that has, make sure if you're gonna use this on a light stand, it has cushion, air cushion like this. Yeah, that's hard to press. So if you want to protect your finger and you want to use your finger for other things, definitely want air cushion. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit more about the linking part because there's some limitation with this, right? So if I link this and the usage case might be sure you can put this on a light stand, but I really wanted to lay it down flat. But problem with this now, guys, the quick release is on the bottom. So if you want to lay it down flat, you cannot do that very well. So the workaround might be if you want to put this on and put another one there and then you can lay it down flat without hitting the also their power button and the mode button is on the back, right? So you don't want to hit that when you lay it down flat. So it is one more step to lay it down flat, but there is a solution. In fact, the next step, I think I want to lay it down flat for this example. So give me a second. Okay, here we go. I found it. <laughs> so I will put one here another one here okay now ah i can lay it down flat so the next limitation i want to share with you is the fact that this light doesn't come with dmx capabilities right so obviously if you link lights like this you want to be able to control it as a group even though this is a centipede line it does connect with the juin zy vega app and you can group them together so i have it pre-grouped already so c100 go ahead and tap that here we go. So it's in a group called C100s, plural. So I can turn on and turn off together, but also let me go ahead and change the color together to let's say blue. So once I hit the intensity, it'll also kind of sync the intensity up. Let me go ahead and turn it off together. So that's kind of their solution for not having DMX ports, but you can do it via Bluetooth with that app. And I love the app. I've been using it for a while. And the range is pretty decent, long as there's no like 100 other Bluetooth connection in the same room. So let's talk about the next con, and that is gonna be the price point because they're marketing this as Cinepure, so you might get a little sticker shot. So starting price on this is $299. So that's the bare bone light. If you wanna get accessories and stuff, that's gonna be $399, which is pushing up to the Aperture Infinity Bar again. But again, it's in a different class. So if you're interested in getting this light, I do recommend you guys using coupon code. There are plenty out there, but if you want, I have one in the description below. So that's a permanent coupon code all year round. Anytime you guys want, use that code. But let's geek out a little bit and talk about the CRI values of these lights. Now, if you guys want to know more about CRI and a common misconception of it, I recommend you guys watch my previous video of the B500 series review because I talk about the skin tone and how manufacturers really don't share that value. But that's okay. That's what this video is for. I spent hours of trying to do this. So I'm not going to display every single result. I mean, there's so much data. So I went ahead and condensed it into a summary form on the important facts. So let me tell you what this light is really good at first and we'll start to nitpick a little bit. So what this light does really, really well, and I'm really surprised by this because a lot of the LED lights at a budget like this, they're not good at this. So when you set this at a certain temperature, for example, 2700 Kelvin, it actually measures really close to it. 
especially on the low range and the high range i mean when you change the actual intensity of it even it stays at that temperature obviously when you start to mix the two different color for example 4600 kelvin and when you go down to 10 percent the color range changes a little bit but to be honest i expected that kind of result throughout the whole entire range so that performed really well and the tlci value of this light is advertised at 98 plus and i'm getting 98 and mostly 99 so that's there but the achilles heel of this light is gonna be the skin tone especially around the mid temperatures as you guys can see at 100 percent power at 4600 kelvin it's getting an r9 value of 65 now r9 might be important if you want to film something who's really drunk and they're getting red uh asian skin tones it does much better so r15 is really for asian skin tones but you know we need to have all r9 r13 r15 value to make good skin tone but surprisingly the r9 value is really really good at 2700 kelvin now most led lights that are a budget they're not very good at the warmer temperature skin tone but this thing is nailing it and i did notice that it has a slight magenta tint to it but what's cool about these lights this isn't a lot of professional light also is that you can change the green value a little bit right so at 6500 kelvin i went ahead and changed the green value to three and as you can see i did improve the r9 r13 and r15 values just by changing that setting so this light does have a little bit more headroom when it gets a firmware update i believe they're gonna make this a little bit better so the takeaway from this whole entire summary is to tell you guys the sweet spot for this light so the sweet spot for this light is that the really really warm tones and really really cold tones and not in the middle and if you want to use it around 4600 kelvin make sure you don't use it around 10 percent intensity you want to get a little higher so ideally this light isn't really for a key light it's really for rim light in fact this is a really good backlight especially in the warmer tones and what i've been using this for is also for weddings so weddings is so hectic right so you don't have time to plug it in somewhere you need to be able to just pick it up and move it around and most of the time wedding reception they're on the warmer tones so i'm able to use this as a kind of a spot key light so i am very glad to have a couple of these in my arsenal to have that long battery life during a wedding and once in a while i might do more of that light painting so here's the result of that light painting i did use lightroom and photoshop to bring out the colors a little bit more and huge thanks to dennis who stayed up on me till i don't know it was like one or two o'clock in the morning so thank you so much for hanging out with me today enjoy the result let me know in the comments what you guys think okay yo it's okay yeah